What is going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and today is a super awesome day for Evolve fans around the world and across all platforms. Turtle Rock and 2K have revealed the next tier of hunters and these guys are coming our way a lot sooner than I think anybody predicted. We are getting Slim the Medic, Sunny the Support, Crow the Trapper, and Torvald the Assault, not to mention Behemoth the Big Rock Monster on March 31st. That's a Tuesday and that is just super awesome because I was predicting these things would launch somewhere in April or maybe even May, but alas, we're getting them in less than two weeks. Now, I don't have any gameplay for you today, but I'm going to work to get my hands on some of that before the launch, if I can, so I'll bring that your way ASAP. But let's get into the details of what these guys and girl bring to the table. We'll start off with Slim the Medic, and I think he's going to provide some variety for that class. At the last tournament at PAX East, Everybody was using Kyra because of her ability to heal from a distance, boost with that Excel field, and, and generally just be the most solid medic and, and maintain her distance from monsters when necessary. Slim brings his own twist to the table and kind of works as both a ranged medic and a close and personal medic. He has drones that go out and heal hunters, which is very different from anything we've seen, and I love how Turtle Rock is able to expand upon the abilities of these hunters, making them just so much different than the last. If you think about Val, and then Lazarus, and then Kyra, and now Slim, which, let me say, I think he is the coolest looking hunter out of all 16. Just look at the guy, half human, half fly hybrid. I can't wait for cosplay because he's freaking incredible. Uh, but those drones will go out and deal or, or rather heal uh, damage or health over time. As soon as the hunter that is being targeted uh, gets attacked, then the drones will return to Slim. But that's not the end of the world, because his healing burst has the largest radius of all the medics. Now, on the damage side of things, his primary weapon is a leech gun, which is able to sap strength from the monster, um, and that helps regen the healing burst skill. So from a distance, he can send those drones out to tough-to-reach places and, and kind of almost have a secondary character, per se, healing up your teammates. Up close and personal, he has a really large healing burst that can be sped up in terms of its usage thanks to this leech gun. Um, now, he also has another very diverse weapon, which is the Spore Cloud Launcher, and masks the scent of the hunters so that the monster cannot smell you or see you. I'm not sure how effective this is going to be or exactly how it's going to work, um, but the leech gun can be used against wildlife as well, so you'll be able to regen your healing burst via monster hits or via just random wildlife hits. I'm not sure how much damage he's going to deal. It's not very clear if any of these deal damage. I assume the leech gun, by sapping strength, also means that it's dealing hit points of damage, but we'll have to see. He sounds like a very eclectic and, and just like a really unique medic. I like the fact that he's sending out these drones, but also has reason to get in uh, with that leech gun and then heal burst. It sort of seems to be a nice push and pull of like, deal some damage so that you can regen your heal burst, then use the heal burst. Even if you're up close, you're regaining health. I don't know. It kind of seems like the perfect storm to me. We'll move right down the line to the support class, the lone female of tier four. This is Sunny, uh, and she's apparently good friends with Abe and Parnell, and she boasts what is being touted as the most damaging single projectile in the game. Her mini nuke grenade launcher sounds freaking fierce. But aside from that, she has a jetpack booster that helps teammates dodge and fly faster. So I, I see this working like Hank's shield, targeting a hunter, and now he has maybe infinite jetpack or just faster recharging jetpack. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that will work. And I was trying to think of what would be more useful, a shield that allows you to still like maintain the focus of the monster but reduce damage or a jetpack that allows you to totally get out of the way when the monster is locked in on one target it's a great chance for his teammates to go in and deal massive damage but at the same time distracting the monster and making his attacks miss or her attacks in the case of wraith could be equally beneficial now she also joins the drone gang with shield drones that go in and cover nearby teammates and take a few hits for those hunters. Again, like, is this the perfect storm to support her jetpack booster, her mini new grenade launcher, and her shield drones? The real crux of both Slim and Sunny is how long these things last for. Is it just a second of protection, a second of healing, 
three seconds. How is that all going to go? I really trust Total Rock that these are balanced to a T. I don't think that all of a sudden, oh, Tier 4 is going to be fantastic. So please wipe that thought out of your mind right away. I'm not worried about that at all. It would break the game, and there's no chance that they would risk it. So I'm sure that these guys have their drawbacks as well. So Sunny support, Jetpack Booster, Grenade Launcher, Shield Drones, um, and then, of course, she has her uh, you know generic ability, which is the, the Team Cloak. Uh, packing a pretty nice package there. Uh, I like her a lot. Crow the Traveler is probably going to be the overall favorite because he's dark, mysterious, and has this bat crow creature thing uh, that he's able to send out and scout for the monster. It sounds almost like a portable Cabot's dust tagging where it's going to go out and then light up creatures around the way. The exact quote from uh, the website is, Gobi, which is the name of this cool looking creature, flies ahead to scout an area and lets Crow quote unquote see nearby creatures. He flies out a couple hundred meters in line of sight, eventually finding its way back to its master. So that definitely will come in handy. And remember, this is a trapper using a creature in the same way that Maggie uses Daisy. So now we've got a little bit of extra variety in terms of the, the duos there within the trapper class. Now in terms of damage, he has the stasis gun. And this thing has two firing modes. The first one is a rapid fire mode that briefly slows the monster down. But the bigger mode is a charge shot that will drop the monster to a crawl. So think of this as a big stasis grenade or a small stasis stasis grenade, but instead of being an area of effect, you're shooting it, I'm guessing, directly at the monster. I don't know if you'll be able to shoot this at an area. I doubt it, though, because then that would make it exactly like the stasis grenade uh, that Abe holds. So I'm thinking this will be a more direct target uh, stasis shot. Um, then he has a kinetic long rifle, um, which again is a dual weapon. And the rapid fire mode deals a lot of damage per second, but charge the shot and he's able to go straight through the armor directly to health, which to me is the most interesting bit of everything Crow does, even more than Gobi. The fact that he can go straight at a monster's health, even if said Goliath or Kraken, Wraith or Behemoth has full armor, you can chip away at that red bar. That's a big deal. So this guy has a portable set of eyes in Crow. He's got a double mode stasis gun, a double mode uh, kinetic long rifle, and then the dome, of course. Now, the stasis gun and the kinetic long rifle, both will be fired either in charge or burst mode, so they're not taking up two slots like Kyra's uh, grenade launcher or anything like that. I think he sounds very cool and will provide an interesting alternative to Maggie. I'm curious how well Gobi will be able to track, though. He's not leading you to the monster. You're more shooting him off, a la, again, Cabot's dust tagging, just in more of a direct way and, and belonging to a trapper rather than a support. The last of the bunch is Torvald, and he is the assault. This guy boasts mortar cannons. I'm not sure if those are going to be firing straight up or more angular or how that's going to work, um, but it says that they're very deadly at a distance. But up close, he is no slouch. He's got a shrapnel grenade that can pepper a target with weak spots and then an auto-fire shotgun to get serious bonus damage. So this guy, with his personal shield, with his mortar cannon, shrapnel grenades, and auto-fire shotgun, to me, he sounds like just an insane damage dealer. He kind of reminds me of Parnell minus the super soldier ability instead of the shrapnel grenade. So he's not dealing damage to himself to power up Super Saiyan style. Instead, he's throwing out shrapnel grenades to damage the monster and illuminate weak points. Imagine the combinations now where you've got Val or Lazarus, you know, adding multipliers to the monster. Then you have Torvald throwing in shrapnel grenades. Then maybe, you know, you've got uh, Cabot with his damage amplifier. Before you know it, this gets incredibly, incredibly dangerous for whatever big beast the hunters are going up against. I mean, comboing all of these guys, like, here is where it gets super, super crazy, because it's not just four characters. It's four new hunters that add to an already humongous amount of possibilities and combinations. So now this exponentially increases the amount of strategy, the amount of teams you're going to face. This is a big boost for the game, not just from the human side of things, but also the monster, because you're going to have to be prepared for a whole new slew of strategies and tactics that are going to come at you. Again, we're looking at guys that have healing drones, we're looking at jetpack boosters, we're looking at Gobi the freaking Crobat, you know, this, imagine, again, you got Stasis Gun on the Trapper, you got Torvald launching shrapnel grenades, you got Sunny 
doing her jetpack booster. I'm not sure how everything's going to stack. Obviously, they're going to have to patch in these characters and make sure that it doesn't create a, a god mode for a certain team of hunters, but they all sound super cool, and it's hard for me to pick a favorite. If I look, though, I think Slim, just because of his visual flair and the fact that he's got these little, like, fly drones, I don't know. To me, that's just a super cool twist uh, on a group of mostly human characters. You know, we've got Bucket, um, and, you know, Daisy, obviously, is a little bit of a dinosaur, but this dude himself being... He reminds me a lot of Baxter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which uh, Big Apple 3 AM is, like, one of my favorite video game quotes ever from Turtles in Time, so there is a weird reference for you. Behemoth also is joining this DLC pack coming March 31st as well. You guys have already heard about him. I'll link to my video detailing all of his abilities uh, in the description below and on an annotation on your screen currently if you want to hear more about him. And like I said, I'll bring you details and gameplay on all these guys as soon as I can. Let me know who your favorite new Tier 4 Hunter is in the comments below. Is it Slim the Medic like me? Is it Crow the Trapper with his pet Gobi? Is it Torvald and his Mortar Cannons? Or is it Sunny the Support with her extra damaging mini nuke grenade launcher. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you're in a fantastic day and hope you're ready to join me in less than two weeks for this new expansion to evolve. Until next time, guys and girls, thanks again for always supporting me and making this series and this game great. Drink some hot chocolate. Thanks again. And we will see you all later.